This Focus on Health segment is brought to you by Aurora Healthcare. Hello and welcome to Focus on Health. I'm Ted Stefaniak. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that's getting a lot of discussion in the community and that's concussions. So we're at the Aurora Medical Center in Oshkosh and we're going to be speaking with pediatrician Dr. Lori Muller about head injuries, the new state law and how we can treat and prevent concussions. Well, thank you for joining us today. We're talking about concussions, and I think most people have heard about concussions. They have an idea of what a concussion is, but technically, what is a concussion? A concussion is an injury to the head that causes some change in brain functioning, and that can be either temporary or permanent change. And with, you know, a lot of the discussion has come from the new state law that, mm -hmm. that Wisconsin has right now. and. If, from your opinion, is this going to help cut down on concussions or treat concussions or, or how do you look at this new law? I think the reason that the law was put in place was actually to make sure that we are doing the right thing for kids with concussions. The newer literature is showing that kids are at increased risk of ongoing problems from a concussion because their brain is still developing. And so the state law was put in place to really make sure that people understand the importance of not ignoring symptoms of concussion. Yeah, well, what could happen if we do ignore those signs of a concussion? The, the new research is showing that kids can have long-term problems in schoolwork with memory, so beyond just the initial symptoms that typically last for the week after the injury. Right, and, and what are some of the signs that uh, that a concussion may have happened. The most obvious signs are obviously following a head or following a head injury. Um, kids will feel that they have a headache. They'll feel dizzy. They may have lost consciousness when they get hit in the head. Um, they can have some numbness or tingling in their hands. But the symptoms that we're also trying to focus on are those that are not as obvious, which are confusion. You'll see kids who are asking the same question over and over again. Um, you'll see kids that just generally don't feel right. We also see some personality changes occasionally in kids where they feel very sad or they feel very nervous, which was not normal for them prior to the head injury. So if you're experiencing those signs with your child, time to get it in, uh, get that person in to, to see you? Yes, and the new law right now states that if a child has a head injury that is interpreted to be a concussion or potentially could be a con concussion, they should be removed from the game, their parents should be notified, and then they should seek health care um, evaluation. Because that child w won't be allowed to go back to participating in the sport until they're cleared by a doctor. Correct, which is where the law comes in place, um, stating that they have to have medical clearance now. Okay, now when you're dealing with, with concussions, is it a wide range of when that person might be able to return, severity of concussion, and how do you treat something like that? Usually most concussion symptoms last for seven to 10 days. And so we really want to see resolution of the headaches and nausea, dizziness, those type of things. But there are kids that will go into two to three months um, of problems with school-related problems or even headaches following a concussion. So it's really on a case-by-case -case basis. But of course, we need to see them symptom-free before they return, and then they will have to complete a stepwise return to play, which you will be provided by your medical care provider. And I would imagine uh, with the state law and everything that's out there with concussion, it's very important that the coaches, the doctors, the, the parents, and the, the athletes are all working together. Pretty important to talk to your kids about the uh, seriousness of concussions. It is, and I think that um, one of the reasons, again, that the NFL kind of encouraged these state laws to go into place is because they want kids being educated. So if they see a teammate that comes down in the locker room after being hit in the head and is confused, that's something they bring to someone's attention. Um, but also to make sure that we all understand what a concussion is and, and what the long-term um, repercussions can be. Now, now, going back to the severity of concussions, are there cases, and, and could it happen that the injury is so severe, the concussion is so severe, that a player might not be able to return to action? There is, and I think it's a really a case-by-case -case basis, but there um, will be times when either an athlete does not show improvement of symptoms, where their healthcare provider may make the recommendation that they no longer participate in um, contact sports. So I guess a big thing here when we're talking about youth sports is prevention. And sometimes you can 
try to prevent it with, with equipment, but not all equipment's gonna be able to stop every concussion. Correct, and so a lot of it is just uh, the most important things are if there is equipment that you can have, such as a well-fit mouth guard. Um, also, helmets for football players should be fit by someone who knows how to fit them. Coaches should probably be checking to make sure they're fit appropriately. Also, there is a lot of research coming out that the fundamentals are important. So these early on youth camps, when kids are learning the appropriate way to do things, will hopefully prevent them from having head injuries down the line. Right, and we talk about head injuries uh, as being the major reason for concussions but you can get a concussion I understand by not being hit in the head correct and so basically a concussion results from kind of the jarring of the brain inside the skull so if you get a hard blow to the body where your brain is rattled then that can result in a concussion as well and again just to kind of go through the steps of the state law uh, it's very important that everyone as we said is on the same page as soon as we see symptoms of a concussion or we think there might be a concussion, the best thing to do is just stop. Correct. And, you know, at least consult with your health care provider, find out what they'd like you to do from that point. Uh, most athletes in programs right now will be coming home with uh, sheets that explain the symptoms of concussion, explain what the new state law defines, and then will require a signature from both parent and athlete um, showing that you understand. Okay. Well, thank you for taking thank some time you. with us today. Thank you. For more information on concussions, you can contact your pediatrician, your primary care provider, or Dr. Muller at 920-303-8700. I'm Ted Stefaniak, and we'll see you next time on Focus on Health. This Focus on Health segment has been brought to you by Aurora Healthcare.